It was a good day. We didn't go quite as long, and we got a little break. We had some cloud cover. So it was hot early, and then it cooled off a little bit. But we got about an hour and 45 minutes in and did some good work, did some more situational stuff. And we will meet today and tomorrow off and get back at it Monday. A little better than yesterday, then? I think so. I think the um, it was crisper, you know, as far as moving from drill to drill and all that. I could tell they're a little bit tired and weary and, you know, that's camp. You know, we're not going two days or anything, but they're working pretty hard. So it was, um, I thought it was a good day and we made some progress. What do you but, think about the lack of the two days now? You know, I don't, I think everybody had kind of cut it down anyway. I mean, we had maybe three scheduled or four. And, you know, it really wasn't a big deal because you could still do some walkthroughs and, and some other stuff, meetings and uh, lifting weights. You know, and I think nowadays, because most of your players are here over the summer getting in shape, you don't need to get them in shape in camp as much. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. To, to this point, do you feel like the, through all of camp, do you feel like offense or defense has had the overall edge? You know, it goes back and forth. I thought the defense did a good job today. We had to struggle getting turnovers. They got a few turnovers today. Some of it was, you know, bad, you know, bad mistakes by the offense, but some of it was good plays by the defense too. So. We were all more active defensively today, and that was pretty good. Offensively, we've done a pretty good job of taking care of the ball. I don't know if we've hardly dropped it on the ground at all as far as running. We had one, a couple bad snaps today. That was out of the norm. But uh, overall, I thought the defense had the upper hand today. What were your big takeaways from the second week of camp? Uh, we've got a lot of stuff in. You know, we're going to have to meet as a staff and like, try to pare it down a little bit, you know, beginning into next week, and then also start to define our depth chart somewhat. Uh, you know, it's hard to give. We're giving three groups a lot of reps and almost equal reps, and that's probably going to start to pare down a little bit toward the middle of next week. Just the that, point in camp where you have to maybe start doing a little bit more motivating just because it's kind of starting to get into yeah, it? Yeah, you hope not, but I think it is. You, you know, I think it's, it's the way, like I told the guys, they're two-thirds of the way through camp. And so they're on the other end going down and just one week left, and there's some fun activities going on this week. So. I think as it gets closer to school, they get more excited because, you know, there's a, always a certain buzz around campus when school starts back up and people start to roll in toward the end of the week. I think, and they have tomorrow completely off. So that, that's, a, I mean, I don't think, as coaches, we like to be able to meet with them, but that's not necessarily bad either. It kind of refreshes their mind too. So what is your, your biggest concern right now, two thirds of the way through? Uh, we still, are, or well, the biggest concern probably is we have some talented guys on both sides that are gonna help us that are new. But you don't really know for sure how they're going to happen when the bright lights come up. You know, the inexperience, the only way to get experience is by playing. And uh, we're going to force some of those young guys to get experience early. You know, I'm excited for them, but a little nervous as a coach, too. Ricky Hunley was out of practice today? Yeah, Ricky was out there. And him and uh, Chuck was probably caught talking about a lot of things in the past. <laughs> and Ricky's a good guy, you know, obviously a great player here. I mean, one of the, one of the three or four or whatever top players ever play here. So you talk about the, the walk-on program a lot, how you feel like you have the best in the country. Is there something in particular you guys do that's maybe different from other I schools? Think, or you know, personally, because I went through it myself, and it's been so important throughout our program's history here and in other places I've been as well, that uh, I think you, if you ask anybody on the team, they don't know a lot of times who the walk-ons are and aren't. And everything gets treated the same. Obviously, you can't you know, pay their way through school. Uh, like a scholarship guy, but everything else, I mean, they're going to get treated and everything's the same. I know some places kind of even put different locker rooms for walk. I can't imagine, oh. for walkers, I can't imagine doing that. And, <laughs> and there's so many guys that have earned scholarships here and well earned scholarships that it used to be. When I first got here, and again, as a transition in program, um, it wasn't really hard to make the team, so to speak. Uh, now it's very competitive to, to get one of those spots on our team. and. There's still guys, really good football players, that want to come join us if we had more room. So I've been really pleased with this, and it's saved us in some respects. And in another respect, I think it's made practice really good, too. You mentioned the younger guys. How has uh, Mike and Johnson been doing this game? He's been good. I, you know, he's, he's a talented guy. Obviously, you know, he's going to get bigger and stronger, um, but he's been working hard. You know, he's, he and Jalen Harris are kind of the same body types. Jalen's probably a little further ahead right now, but uh, Mike King's going to be a good player, I think. Ideally, do him and Harris, because of their weight, do you see them eventually going to the defensive line? Or are they no, going they're ends. And I, and I think playing the stud and the end is a perfect thing for them. Ideally, they're going to gain about 30 pounds and be faster. And then you know, Jaden's got a chance to probably play some special teams this year. 
you know, because he's in great shape. He, he worked his tail off this summer, so we'll see what happens. I was going to say, how much more confident are you in that special teams coverage unit as compared to maybe like with some health and some depth? Well, you know, I'm uh, calm because Lucas has been kicking the ball off tremendously. I mean, really good. And that was the reason why we brought him in. Uh, so he's been, he kicked off well, really well to, today. I think, you know, we're going to have a, uh, some real competition for the coverage units. So, and it's not close yet, but again, in a couple of days, we have to, Coach Noor and the staff, have to, we have to pare that down a little bit. Are there guys who can earn a job in this final week? Are things pretty Oh, absolutely. In the next week and a half, really. I mean, and even after the first game, it's always competition. But there's a lot of positions in particular where I'm sure when I meet with the coaches in the next couple of days, it'll be like it could be, you know, these, these two are equal or these three are equal. And I almost hope it is that way. How much can your opinion of a kid change once they put those pads on for the first time? Well, that, that's a true measure. Some guys will slow down a little bit and some guys will speed up and be more aggressive. And you hope the aggressiveness is uh, already in them. You don't have to coach it. And that's when I feel good about some of our young guys that it, they're innately aggressive. And that's what we tried to find in recruiting. Thanks, All right.